Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., 1968 Today's concert is called Walking the Steps, a musical tribute to the Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., We will explore the marches, campaigns, and protests of King's life through music, oratory, and narration. Produced by the Coalition for African Americans in the Performing Arts, also known as CAPA, the concert delves into how King may have been inspired by the music he heard in order to walk the steps he walked and proclaim his belief in his speeches. Now, wherever you are, please stand as we listen to the Negro National Anthem performed by the Kappa Soprano Slay 2019 Ensemble.
Did you know that Reverend King had been asked to run for President of the United States of America? Yes, early in 1967, America was involved in an escalating war in Vietnam, presided over by President Lyndon B. Johnson. A collection of liberal leaders were determined to recruit a serious anti-war candidate to challenge Johnson in 1968. They believed they had the perfect prospect, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. But he declined. It is important to understand why this great leader declined the presidency and what his thought process was. He didn't want the presidency. King only wanted to focus on the campaigns, the marches, and the protests, which he felt would have made more of an impact for the civil rights movement, emphasizing civil resistance. And he was called to do just that, exactly what he did. We open our program with a song which may have spoken directly to King's heart during the most difficult times that he endured. A song that may have epitomized his travels, his marches, the steps he took, and ultimately his walk. The question, Lord, how come me here? Oh, 
was born and we shall. was born we Indeed, King was motivated to walk and pray. And perhaps this next song helped to motivate him to walk in the steps of a crusader. Like a flowing river, he felt compelled and he knew that his steps had been ordered by the Lord. One of the steps King made was through the Albany Movement, a coalition 
formed to protest city segregation policies. Dr. King planned to counsel the protesters for one day. Instead, he was jailed and declined bail until the city changed its segregation policies. We know he sang, and we know he prayed to his Jesus.
Indeed, King prayed. And eventually, the city made several concessions. And King left jail and then Albany. But he returned the next year to find that little had changed. Upon his return, he was convicted of leading the prior year's protest and sentenced to 45 days in jail or a $178 fine. He chose jail. Three days into King's sentence, an Albany police chief arranged for his release. Oh my, what a witness. The steps for Dr. Martin Luther King also included the Montgomery bus boycott, which lasted just over a year and was designed to protest the racial discrimination faced in Montgomery, Alabama. Following Rosa Parks' arrest for refusing to give up her seat on a bus to a white person, the next day, Dr. King proposed a citywide boycott of public transportation at a church meeting. The boycott proved to be effective, but the situation became so tense that the members of the White Citizens Council firebombed King's house. All he could do was to pray and to feel the Spirit.
There were three separate marches from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, in bids for voting rights for all. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King helped organize all of them. The first march involved nearly 600 protesters who marched east from Selma on U.S. Highway 80, led by John and Reverend Hosiah Williams. King was not present because he had church duties, but he knew we would overcome. Days before, King had met with government officials to try to ensure the marches would not be stopped. Even so, mob and police violence caused the march to be aborted on that bloody Sunday. When film footage of the police brutality was broadcast around the country, it sparked widespread public outrage and helped to boost support for the civil rights movement. He knew then that we would overcome. King tried to organize the second march, but protesters did not succeed in getting to Montgomery until March 25th. But he made a speech. Let's listen to his response in How Long, Not Long, an excerpt. I know you're asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, yes, sir. however frustrating the hour, it will not be long, no, because truth crushed earth will rise again. Yes, sir. How long, not long, yes, sir. because no lie can live forever. Yes, sir. How long, not long, How long? Yes, because you shall reap what you sow. Yes, sir. How long, How not long? long. How long? Truth forever on the scaffold, yes, wrong yes, forever on the throne. Yes, sir. Yet that scaffold sways the future. Yes, Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Yes, Not long. Yes, because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Yes, sir. How long? Not, Not long. long. Because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yes, He's trampling out the village. Where the grapes of wrath are stored. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. Yes, sir. His truth is marching on. Yes, sir. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. Yes, he is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Yes, oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, Glory, hallelujah. Yes, Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. This truth is marching on. Indeed, Bloody Sunday, the march from Selma to Montgomery was the most well-known and was the turning point for the civil rights movement. In building public support and clearly demonstrating King's strategy of nonviolence. Even though he may have felt overwhelmed at times and he may have felt that things were over his head, he knew we would overcome.
When the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King walked, he walked. Little did the country know that one of his most poignant walks included the March on Washington on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on August 28, 1963, where he said in his speech, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creeds. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be, be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all flesh. No, he wasn't tired. his life, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. remained committed to using social movement pressure 
to force officials to act in ways they would have otherwise avoided. Indeed, he walked in the steps of freedom, in the steps of justice and equality. Indeed, he had been to the mountaintop. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. for equal jobs, equal pay, good education, fair housing and medical practices, and we are still marching for our rights as human beings. But with persistence, we shall overcome. Or will we? We shall overcome. We shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. 
Right to protest far right. <laughs> <laughs> 